Amen. If you'd like to turn, please, to John chapter 10. <clears throat> John chapter 10. And we'll read the last three, four verses of the, the chapter. John chapter 10, beginning at verse 39. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless his word to us. Tonight the message really is to encourage us to press on in our labors to see uh, souls one for Christ. We need to be encouraged to just keep going. And this message provides, I think, provides an incentive for us to keep on keeping on with the efforts that were, Kenny's smiling because he's heard that. If he's in IT, you've heard keep on, keep on, keep on keeping on or all the other sayings that business seem to throw at you. But it is true when we talk about the gospel, we need to keep on keeping on. And this hopefully will help us to do that. You see, before even effectiveness, <coughs> Laboring in the gospel is about being committed. Before effectiveness, it's about being faithful to the ministry that God has put you in. And that's what we see in the passage that we read, these few verses that we read tonight. Now these verses thankfully do speak about effectiveness and fruitfulness for the gospel, or in the gospel. And, and that's marvelous. But, but they speak about it in a different way from perhaps we would have thought. This passage portrays uh, effectiveness as the result of faithfulness. Being effective in the gospel is the result of faithfulness to the gospel. The title of the message tonight, if you want a title, is The Unseen Harvest. The Unseen Harvest. You see, this man, John the Baptist, ministered the truth. He preached and baptized. We know that he was um, the baptizer. Um, but even as he was baptizing, John ministered the truth. In verse 40, we're told here that Jesus went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he stayed, or there he abode. He went to the place where John had been ministering. John had been baptizing, but he had been preaching the gospel. Um, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's Matthew chapter 3, first two verses. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And we all know the beautiful words that, that John used when he pointed Jesus out, when he said, behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And, and so John came with these uh, words as well as baptizing. Baptizing those who would repent. He preached the truth. Um, and that's where Jesus went. Jesus went to the place where John had been preaching, where John had been ministering. He went to the place where the people had heard the ministry of the Baptist. that's significant because John wasn't around anymore but Jesus went to where John ministered he went to that place 
the past ministry of John the Baptist. The past ministry of John the Baptist in these verses is presented as being really influential for what's happening here. The past ministry touching the moment where Jesus was in that place beyond Jordan. Does that not encourage you? That encourages me that the past ministry is influencing the moment. That encourages us to keep going, surely. Because uh, how long have you been doing it? How long have you been preaching the gospel? How long have you been witnessing up to the Lord Jesus Christ? And you haven't seen any fruit, have you? Well, maybe ones and twos. Of course you've seen some fruit, but you haven't seen a mass influx of people into the kingdom. That's what we want. But this should encourage us. The unseen harvest, you see. When we're preaching the gospel just now, whether it be with friends or family or work colleagues or wherever the, whatever the context is, and we don't see. Maybe we've been doing it for a while, but folks, the day's coming when there's going to be fruit for that un. That, that ministry, there's going to be a, a, a revelation of the unseen harvest that you don't know anything about at this moment. You're preaching the gospel and you don't know anything about what God is doing in the lives of people. There is a harvest, you just don't see it yet. John wasn't there anymore. But Jesus went to the place where the people had heard John's ministry. But then, of course, we we follow that on in the next verse and many resorted unto him and said John did no miracle but all things that John spake of this man were true so there are the people who have heard the ministry of John here is Jesus now going to that place where John baptized at first and the people are hearing Jesus, seeing Jesus. And what they're realizing is, John the Baptist's ministry about him was right. It was accurate. In other words, what John had been saying to them in the past was now coming back to their minds and to their hearts. You see, John had, had, had faithfully planted the seed and that was now coming to the surface. You've heard testimony. I've heard testimony of people uh, who have been touched by the gospel in Sunday school or in, in Christian uh, youth camps or gatherings. But nothing happened there and then. They heard the gospel, but they testify in later life that what they heard then has, has held them, has always been there. And then something happened and that came to fruition. You see, that's the, that's the faithful planting of the seed that John was doing. John was keeping on, keeping on, putting that word out as he baptized. And people were hearing about Jesus Christ. John came to prepare the way, didn't he? We know that John was the voice in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was telling people about Jesus. Isn't it marvelous that even though they may not have responded, it was there. The seed was getting planted. That's another beautiful thought for me because By the world's standards, we are judged. Our ministries are judged. The church is judged by immediate response, by immediate results. Thank the Lord that that is not how he judges your ministry or mine. Thank the Lord he doesn't judge us by the world's standards. No, no, no. He has used your ministry to plant the seed. How long have you been preaching in Sucky Hall Street? 
folks. How long have you been ministering the word of God there? Is it not a real encouragement that that seed is being planted? That that seed is being planted and, it, and it, it's not being planted in vain. You know what I mean? You're, this is not a waste of time and effort. How long have you been preaching the gospel? I've been preaching the gospel almost since I got saved. It's not a waste of time. God is putting the seed of his word into the hearts of people. Faithful ministry, past ministry, makes an impact in the here and now. Oh, hallelujah. That's a real encouragement to the believer. Past ministry in the here and now. John definitely prepared the way for the Lord. There's no doubt about it. Jesus held John the Baptist in high esteem. There's, there's no man born of woman like John the Baptist. A burning light, a shining light. Why was he burning? Why was he shining? He was burning and shining with the gospel. He was burning and shining with the truth. He was telling the world around him. He was preparing them for the Lord to come. I think that's a marvelous ministry to have. And every single one of us are John the Baptist to someone or to some group of people. Every one of us. We've been preparing the way for the Lord. Well, Jesus went to this place where John had ministered to the people that had heard John's ministry. And now they come to Jesus Christ and they say, even although John didn't do any miracles, he spoke the truth. Hallelujah. Here's another truth that really thrills us as Christians. God doesn't judge us even the way that some of the church judges us. You know, some sections of the church think it's a success, think it's, it's fruitful by, from God, think it's a work of God because they see miracles on the left hand, miracles on the right hand, miracles above them and miracles behind them. They, they think that the only measure of success is the miraculous, so hallelujah. These people said about John the Baptist, he didn't do any miracles, but he spoke the truth. Hallelujah. If God wants to work a miracle in this church and do something marvelous with his power here in this place, we receive it with open arms and we will marvel at it like anyone else. But we speak the truth. Whether the miracle happens today or not, we speak the truth. You've been speaking the truth in this church for so long. Hallelujah. There is seed being planted Folks, there are people who have walked away from this place. But the seed is there because of faithful, committed ministry. And we pray that that will bring them back to that place again of coming to God, coming back to Jesus. See these folks in Zion, they didn't, I didn't see any miracles when I was there, but boy, have they told me the truth about Christ. What a testimony. He did nothing, this man John. Nothing, nothing spectacular. Nothing out of the ordinary. You kidding me? He spoke the truth of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And that is never, ever wasted. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a church where Miracles were happening all the time. And we're thinking, oh, this is marvelous. We come to church and woof, there's something else happening. Oh, there's another one. Oh, that's marvelous. Or would you rather come to a place that believes in the power of God, that believes in God's sovereignty over what he does, that believes in the signs and wonders, believes in the sign gifts, believes in the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Yes, but we speak the truth first. I want to be in a place where the gospel's preached. That's where I want to be. That's why 
That's why I'm in love with this church. It just thrills my heart because there are so many people in here with a kindred spirit with me. I haven't known that wholesale. There's always been people who have been kindred spirits, but this is a marvelous place. And the reason that is, you know what the reason is? The gospel's preached. The gospel has been preached. And folks, the gospel always will be preached. Because you see, it's through the preaching of the gospel that things change. John was faithful in his ministry. He kept it going. He, he continued to do it, what he was sent to do to prepare the way. And now we see people coming to Jesus and saying everything he said about you was true. But it didn't finish there. Thank the Lord it didn't finish there. It wasn't just that their interest was kindled and that they, and they realized actually what I've heard is right. Verse 42 says, and many believed on him there. Why did they believe? They believed because of the ministry of John the Baptist. He didn't see this. This is the unseen harvest. Many believed in him there. Unseen. John never saw it. John didn't experience it. But it's happening. Because of what John said and because of what John did, people were now believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that not make you excited about the ministry that God's given us as a, as a church? in all the different aspects of it. Past ministry will not only impact, past ministry will bear fruit. Past ministry will see the, un, will see the unseen harvest being revealed. Do you believe that? We need to believe that in this place. The church needs to believe that the ministry that has been given for so many years has been preparing an unseen harvest that one day it's just going to explode. One day it's just, pfft, there it is. Oh, there it goes. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that day when we're sitting here in church or when we're evangelizing in whatever way that is for us. And all of a sudden, boof, oh, there it is. I've been ministering to that person for so long and bang, just, life has just exploded into their heart. Why? Because of that moment? No, no, no. Because of all the moments. Because of all the words you've said. We need to be aware that there is an unseen harvest. When we've been planting the seed of the gospel, it, it, if we're planting the seed of the gospel, it will accomplish what that seed is meant to accomplish. Paul said, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we're faithful in the ministry, if we keep it going, if we can committed, or continue committed to the work that God has given this church, then there will be a harvest, the unseen harvest will be revealed. Ah, but it might not be revealed to us. It might be revealed in someone else's ministry further down the line. Because you might be just planting the seed, planting the seed for someone else to reap the harvest. And we need to be content with that at times as Christians because we're really impatient and we want to see it and we want to see it now. Maybe God is saying, well, actually, I'm using you to plant the seed. There's someone else coming along at a later date that's going to reap the harvest of your work. Oh, that's beautiful. We need to be content to be groundbreakers at times, or seed planters. 
We want to see revival, absolutely. We might see the harvest revealed. Someone else might see the harvest revealed. That means a beautiful truth for us. There have been faithful servants preaching the gospel in this church for many years. There have been faithful servants out in the street preaching the gospel from this church for many years. Maybe you're just going to reap the unseen harvest that they have planted. Hallelujah. Oh, what a joyful thought that is. What an excitement. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that. That the ministry in this place has been planting seed for decades. And some of it has been brought to the fore. Some of it has been revealed. Oh, praise the Lord. But you see, the wonderful thing is that there is an unseen harvest yet to come because of what the pastor preached, because of what the, the men and the elders in the church have preached, because of what you've been doing in your life and in your witness. There is an unseen harvest yet to come. And we need to keep going and keep going so that it is revealed in our lives. Be content to plant the seed for another ministry, maybe even years down the line. But be excited and look for the unseen harvest that has been planted years ago to just be revealed in this place. Oh, Lord, would you do it? Do it. Lord God, let us see the unseen. Father, we thank you for the great truth that commitment, faithfulness in the work of the gospel results in blessing, results in the harvest. Oh, Father, would you be with us tonight and help us to pray and to release our hearts to you tonight, to, to open up, Lord, and just cry for more of your presence, more of your power to be given this contentment and peace in our spirits that what we do week in, week out, day in, day out is planting the seed. May we be content with that, but may we be excited, Father God, that there is an unseen harvest and it's going to be magnificent when you reveal it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.